to YouTube. Okay, so I am currently on the Toronto subway and my friends and I are going over to Seascape. So I've never been before, but my friend Stephanie says that it's like a really cool board game slash video game cafe thing that she read about on Vlogtio. So that's always a good sign. Uh, yeah, so hopefully it'll be a cool experience and I can't wait to show you guys around. Wow, this place doesn't look that much from the outside, but inside is amazing. Really, really cool art on the walls over here. They've got board games that you can play for five bucks. I'm not sure if these are just classic board games or if they're sci-fi related uh, in theme with the rest of the cafe. Got these hazard tape tables. Marvel nerds will love this. They also have these private booths over here that are themed. So this one looks like it's uh, jungle themed. You can order food, sit with your friends in here. They've got one over here. It kind of looks like a, a tomb of sorts. Ooh, this one kind of looks like it's like a medieval library. You've got like a sword, skull over there, a la Hamlet style. And this is the booth that we picked. I don't even know what it looks like. Maybe like post-apocalyptic world? Yeah, yeah, I was like, what's haunting this? I think it's cool though. I like it. It's a good time. It's very artsy. It is very artsy. Yeah. So one of the big selling features of Seascape is that you can also play video games here. So they have an entire collection. Looks like it's just popular games over here. Mario Kart. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't actually know game consoles that well, but they have the kind of games that come in the green box. So that's good. Call of Duty, Halo. Alright, so this is what the menu over at Seascape looks like. Uh, prices are pretty standard for typical like cafes that also offer board games. I mean, it's not the most expensive thing, but they're definitely more expensive than if you would just go to like a second cup or a Starbucks. This is the bar situation, so again, it looks like they just have standard lattes, teas, coffees. Uh, prices are fairly good. Over here, they have the snack section. So in addition to getting like actual sandwiches and real food, you can also stock up here on cookies, gummy bears. Decoration game is pretty strong. Look at this, very sci-fi. Super old school, Super Mario Smash Bros. from like 1999. Except just. Alright, so we weren't about that emulator life, so now we are playing Settlers of Catan. Uh, we are in the creepy face room. Hey y'all, so it is a few hours later and I am back from my adventure at Seascape. So <laughs> I just took like a four hour nap. I was so tired when I got home so I didn't have a chance to finish the ending. But here I am a few hours later, refreshed and ready to review. So I had a really interesting time at Seascape. Um, while it was a good experience, and I definitely recommend you go at least once to check it out, I don't think I'll be going back for a repeat visit, and here's why. So some of the pros about Seascape is that it really is like nothing I've experienced in Toronto before. So when you went in, as you can see from the video, they had these like really cool little pods that were decorated each in a different theme. The decorations were so well done. Um, my friend was feeling some of the fake human fingers in like the dead carcass room and he was like, whoa, these actually feel like fingers, it's so creepy. Um, so the special effects are really well done and when you go in, you immediately get this like 
gamer, sci-fi, den kind of vibe. It's really, it's a really nice place to go with friends or even just, you know, on a date, if your date's really into video games or into like action movies, uh, sci-fi, that kind of stuff, I would definitely say it's a must visit. However, the reason why I don't think I'll be going back is that it's actually pretty pricey. Um, so if you want to play video games, it's $5 for the first hour, and everybody knows you can't just play video games for an hour, okay? And then if you want to stay for the rest of the day, it's $10 for the all-day pass, and it's $10 per person. Um, so I went with... Um, or other people, God, like I can't even, it's like, you know sometimes when there's just a lot of people and you're like, I don't know how many of you there are, but I know it's between five and seven. Okay, so I just had that moment. Um, but yeah, I went with four, oh my God, I did it again. Okay, let's just say there was like five people, okay. And then in the end, it cost us $66 uh, to get passes for all of us. And then somebody got like a coffee and then somebody got a tea. So it's definitely on the pricier side of the board game cafe spectrum. Uh, if you wanted to play board games, however, then it's $5 for the whole day, something like that. Yeah, so board games are definitely the more economical choice. Um, but we went in and we were like, yo, if we wanted to play board games, we would have just went to Snakes and Lattes. Like, we're here to play Super Smash Bros. Um, and then in the end, there was about, yeah, like six people and then it cost us $66 and that was even with the 15% discount that they gave us so in the end if you go with a group of friends it may cost you well over $70, $80 so it's definitely pricey. Um, another con is that the video games they have definitely are not worth $10 like I'm sorry you saw the video we we're playing 1999 Super Smash Bros. I did not pay $10 to play on like an emulator or a simulator or whatever it's called. Um, so I guess if you like Xbox 360, because it seemed like they did have more games for Xbox 360, they didn't have a Wii there, so you know, make sure you research beforehand what game consoles they actually have so you don't go disappointed. Um, and the food seemed like it was a bit overpriced. Um, we didn't actually order any food, but just like looking at other people's portions and what they offered and like the quality of the drinks we received, it did seem like the food was a little bit overpriced and was just average to meh quality. So my overall rating for Seascape board games slash video games cafe is it's a 6.5 to 7 out of 10. I mean, I really enjoyed the atmosphere. It was not, like nothing I had ever experienced in Toronto before, which is why I recommend you go at least once. But if you are looking to go as like a repeat thing, um, then I don't know if it's your best choice just because it is pricey and the selection that they have for games and uh, video games seem to be on the smaller end, so I don't even know if it'd be worth your money. But yeah, so this was Brandon and Lisa do stuff, uh, or Lisa does stuff without Brandon, and until next time, we will see you then.